In this lesson, you'll learn how to play the rhythm guitar parts in the intro to One by Metallica. While these parts were played on a clean electric guitar, you can learn these parts on any electric or acoustic guitar. I'll go through the parts slowly, I'll give you advice and tips on how to play the parts, and I'll talk about how to practice the parts to make them sound as good as possible. This lesson is meant for beginners, so anybody should be able to follow along. I'll also show the guitar tab along with the parts, so if you don't know how to read guitar tab, check out the link in the description for a full guide on guitar tab. The guide covers everything you need to know about guitar tab, including what all the symbols mean. Let's start with the very first guitar riff you hear in the song. Here's the first part at full speed. Okay, so let's go through how to get started with learning this part. The first thing to think about is which fingers to use to play each note. A good tip with guitar in general is to look at the lowest fret number in the riff you want to play and use your index finger to play that note. Then you use one finger per fret above that. So in this riff, you can see that the lowest fret number played is the second fret. So anytime you see the second fret, play it with your index finger. Then you assign one finger per fret above that. That means you play the 3rd fret with your middle finger, the 4th fret with your ring finger, and then the 5th fret with your pinky. In this riff we're only playing the 2nd, 3rd and 4th frets, so you'll use your first 3 fingers. Watch me play the part again, and look at how I keep using 1 finger per fret, and I keep using the same fingers every time. Okay, so now that you know which fingers to use, the second thing to keep in mind when playing this riff is how the notes ring out. In the guitar tab, you'll see a dashed line with let ring marked. What this means is that you want to hold down each note for as long as possible so it keeps ringing out. When you listen to the song, you'll hear that the notes clearly ring out. You want to try and do the same thing. When playing this riff, try to hold each finger down on the frets and keep pressing them down as long as possible. You should only lift the finger off of the fret when you need to change that fret you are playing. So in the first bar, you can see that I only lift my third finger off of the fourth fret when I need to play the open string instead. This might feel awkward at first, but if you stick to practicing it, your riffs will sound much better. Try doing this with the first bar. Start by placing your index finger on the second fret and your ring finger on the fourth fret. Have both fingers held down into position before you pick the first note. When your fingers are in position, pick the first three notes while you keep your fingers held down. Then lift your ring finger off of the fret to play the last note, the open string. The important thing to remember is that you don't lift your index finger off of the second fret. Keep holding it in place. You only need to lift that finger off when you go to the next bar. In the second bar, you're doing the same basic thing, but the first and third note is different. Use your middle finger to play the 3rd fret, and your ring finger to play the 4th fret. Here are the first two bars played at half speed, so you can see how you should try and move your fingers in and out of position. Take your time with this. If you rush, it's not going to sound good and you might develop bad habits. The last thing to try and focus on when you're learning this riff is to use your fingertips as much as possible. You want to try and avoid your fingers touching adjacent strings. If one of your fingers touches other strings, it will mute that string. Using your fingertips will help you avoid accidentally muting other strings while you're playing. Let's jump to the last bar in this part. The last bar is a little bit different to the rest. It's only four notes, but you need to think about how you play each of these four notes. Here's the last part of the riff. Have a listen to how each of the last four notes sound. What you might notice is the jumpy or stop and start feel to the four notes. The second and fourth notes use what is called staccato. Staccato is when you instantly lift your finger lightly off the note as soon as you play it to make it sound really short. Try picking a note and then instead of just holding it down, immediately lift your finger off of the fret. It's not quite a pull off, 
The idea is to just cut the note out. Here's the last part at half speed. Listen closely to how I lift those notes to make them sound staccato. Okay, so here are the key points to remember with this first part. First, keep one finger per fret, starting with the index finger on the second fret. Second, try to hold the notes down as long as possible and only lift your finger off of a note when you need to change to something else on that string. Third, try to use your fingertips to try and avoid touching adjacent strings. If you hear notes sound muted or they cut off when you try and pick them, look closely to see if your fingers are touching the strings. Finally, remember the staccato notes in the very last bar. You want all of the notes to ring out except for these last two staccato notes. Here's the first part played at half tempo along with a metronome. I recommend practicing along with this so you can get used to the rhythm. Here we go. Don't worry if that's too fast for you right now. With practice, you'll eventually be able to easily play along. If you can easily play along with the half tempo version, use a metronome to gradually build up the tempo to full speed, which is around 100 beats per minute. Before we move on to the next part, let's have a quick look at your picking technique. With simple guitar parts like this, you can pick the notes pretty much any way you want. I recommend trying out two different picking styles so you can get used to both of them. The first picking style is to use all down picking. This is how James Hetfield plays most of his riffs, and for a beginner, using all down picking makes this part slightly easier to learn. Here's what your picking hand should look like if you play this riff using all down picking. Everybody holds the pick slightly different, so don't worry if your hand looks slightly different than mine. The other picking style to try out is alternate picking. This is where you alternate back and forth between down and up picking. So you'll be picking down, up, down, up, down, up for every note. Here's what your hand should look like when using alternate picking. This might feel harder at first if you've never tried alternate picking before, but I rarely recommend practicing it. Alternate picking comes in really handy for more complicated riffs, as you'll see next. Okay, let's have a look at the next rhythm guitar part. I highly recommend spending some time working on the first part before you learn this part, but if you're ready, let's have a look at it. This second part is very similar to the first part, with only a few extra notes added in. The first three notes for each bar are identical, then there are a few extra added in notes. This is why I recommend getting really comfortable with the first part before you try and learn this bit. Here's what the part sounds like at full tempo. When you learn this part, keep the same points in mind from the first part. Keep holding your fingers in place, use your fingertips, and keep using one finger per fret. With this part, I recommend using alternate picking. Those extra notes are quite fast, so alternate picking will make them easier to play. Here's what alternate picking looks like for this part.
It might look complicated, but just think to yourself, down, up, down, up, down, up for every note. The last two bars in this part are a bit different as they lead to the next section in the song. I recommend leaving this part for now so you can focus your attention on the rest of the riff. Once you feel comfortable with the rest of the part, you can add these two bars back in. The key thing to remember with the last two bars is the hammer-on and the way your hand needs to shift up the fretboard to reach the higher notes. Watch my hand in this slowed down version and notice how I shift my hand up while sticking to the one finger per fret idea. Okay, here's the second part at half tempo with a metronome to try playing along to. Feel free to leave out the last two bars if you're not ready to practice them yet. practice the first guitar part, the easier this second part will feel. Here's the second part at full tempo with a metronome. Okay, let's finish this lesson by looking at how you should learn and practice these parts. Here are some basic tips to keep in mind so you can learn the parts as fast as possible while making sure they sound just like what you hear in the song. First, practice this every day. Even if you can only practice for 5 minutes, practicing every day is the best way to learn something. Second, don't rush. Don't try to speed up your playing to match what you hear in the song. Instead, try to memorize the parts first and play without any mistakes as slow as you need to. If you need a slower part down for you to play it right, then do it. You can always speed it up later on. Third, take breaks. If you ever feel frustrated, take a short break and come back to it later on. Super long practice sessions might sound impressive, but they can cause more harm than good. So aim for short and regular practice sessions. Finally, don't be too quick to move on to the next part of the song. While there are a lot of great riffs and solos in this song to learn, don't move on until you have mastered these basic riffs. Getting in the habit of mastering something before you move on to something else is really hard to do, but it does wonders for your technique. Have fun practicing these riffs and check out the full guide in the description for more tips and advice on technique. I'll talk to you again in the next lesson for this song.